In this video, I'm going to go over the solutions for problem set 5.2, questions 16 through 20, found on page 181 and 182. Number 16 is a visual representation of a set of reactions that you can use Hess's law to find the unknown value. So what this uh, set of equations is showing you is that to go from P to Q is an endothermic reaction which absorbs 50 joules, kilojoules of energy. But if I went from Q to P, that would become a minus 50. Q to S is an exothermic, requiring minus 60 kilojoules to be released. So S to Q would be positive 60. So again, when I look at this, then P to S, if I went P to Q to S, I would add the plus 50 and the minus 60, and I would expect a delta H of minus 10. But I went but if I went from S to P, then I would flip both signs, and I would expect it to be positive 10. So which of the following statements are correct? It says P to S is a minus 10, and that's true because I would take plus 50 and minus 60, and that indeed would be minus 10. The second statement says R to Q should equal plus 90. So R to Q, I can go R to S to Q. And when I do that, R to S, that's running the correct direction. But the second equation, S to Q, when I run that direction, that's a positive 60, not a minus 60. So yes, R to Q should be plus 90. And then P to R, it says should be plus 20. Well, this one's a little trickier because I don't have a value for P to R. But I can go R to S to Q to P. And when I do that, I have plus 30. I have to flip the S to Q to plus 60. And I also have to flip the Q to P to minus 50. And when I do that, I come up with a value of plus 40, not plus 20. So statement 3 does not appear to be correct, but 1 and 2 are correct. So A would be my choice for number 16. In question 17, you're given two equations and asked to get the desired equation of carbon in the form of graphite plus half an O2 yields carbon monoxide. And so as I look at the two equations they've given me, I notice that in the first equation, I've got carbon on the reactant side and in the amount that I want it down below. So I don't need to do anything to this first equation. I'm just going to leave that equation and leave the value. The second equation, though, my CO is the right amount, but I need to flip this one to have my cancels, to have my uh, equations add up and the correct things cancel out. So when I flip it, then when I go ahead and do the math here, I'm going to end up with negative 111 kilojoules per mole as my delta H for number 17. Number 18 is a similar problem. You're given two equations and asked to come up with the desired equation of 2NO plus O2 yields 2NO2. So again, looking at the two equations I'm given, I see that I've got 2NO in the first one, which matches the 2NO below, but I am going to need to flip this in order to make it a reactant, so this has become negative instead of positive. And the N2 um, yielding NO2 that is the correct product and the correct amount, so this one I can leave. So again, with the negative 180.5 and the positive 66.4, when I sum that, I get a negative 114.1 kilojoules per mole. So Hess's Law, when it's just two equations and you're given the desired equation, it's pretty straightforward. Number 19, another similar equation. I've got two equations given to me in the desired equation. And also I forgot an NO2 here, though that'll make it a little trickier. So when I look at my first equation, NO2 is, needs to be on the reactant side and it needs to be doubled. So this is going to have to flip and take it times 2. The N2O4 is on the correct side and the correct amount, so I can just leave that. And then I might as well round this to 9.2 because my sig figs are going to be um, just one decimal place. And when I go ahead and add my equations and add my values, I come up with a delta H of negative 57.2. And you can label it kilojoules or kilojoules per mole. 
on these problems. Number 20 is very similar to the equations we've just been looking at. I have two equations that I need to add together to yield my desired equation on the bottom. So when I look at the first equation, I see I have CO2 as a product and I need it as a reactant, so that means I have to flip the equation and switch the sign, so it's going to become a positive 283. And then the second equation, this one's a little trickier because I have H2O and H2O, it's on the product side, but now instead of having to double it, I actually have to half this reaction. So I'm only going to have one H2, half an O2, and one H2O. But as you can see, that will make my H2, my half O2 cancel out and leave me with just the one H2O that I want. So I leave the sign, but I do divide this in half. And when I do that, then I actually end up with a very small uh, change in enthalpy. This is only going to be minus 3 kilojoules per mole. Or minus 3 kilojoules is fine for a label as well.